I asked for an AI generated picture of the Battle of First Bull Run, and this is what I got. I liked it, so I kept it. Greetings. Today, I'm soloing First Bull Run, the pub battle scenario by Command Post Games. Now this time, because I want to make it as obvious as possible to those watching, I've got the labels facing up as though the units were spent. When they do become spent, I turn them back to their, what would normally be their fresh position with the labels hidden. So those of you very familiar with pub battles, it might seem a bit strange. Also, because I'm much more experienced with this than the inexperienced units are, I know that when they get into combat, they can dissolve instantly, which means that I hold back on any combat until I've got everything in place and can just go for it, because you got one shot with these armies. All right, let's see how it plays out. Let's begin our replay of the Battle of Bull Run with a full view of the map. The southern forces under Beauregard have entered enemy territory and are now set up behind the Bull Run Creek. At Manassas Junction, Johnson's Army of the Shenandoah has just arrived by rail. Beauregard's forces are spread out. They're not sure where the Union will attack. McDowell himself on the Union side just has enough troops to cover the approaches and defend Washington, D.C. His plan is to flank the Confederate Army with forces you'll see coming on, on the west side of the map later this morning. Johnston's army will remain where it is until the Union has crossed Bull Run. Now obviously this battle would fall very differently if everyone knew where everyone was. But they don't. They just have an idea there's a large enemy force on the other side of the Bull Run. I like to start this scenario with the historical setup because it best reflects the unknown nature of the beginning of the battle. Because I'm playing solo, I can recreate this fog of war, this uncertainty. I'm not trying to be fair to this side or that side. I'm simply saying this is what the commanders in the situation would have known. How would they respond? With the chip draw, what intelligence is revealed to who and when can be different every time. So you can play the game with the same strategy if you wish, the same setup, and it'll play differently every time based on the chit draw. Let's see how this goes. The first chit drawn is Beauregard. He's set up. He's waiting for the battle to happen. He holds his positions. Miles, 5th Division is drawn, and he'll advance his right flank forward. Johnson's Army of the Shenandoah is drawn. Since the North has not crossed the Bull Run yet, they do not move. Tyler's 1st Division is drawn, and their artillery opens up on the Confederates on the other side of Bull Run. Longstreet's brigade of Beauregard's army is driven back. And Miles orders Richardson's brigade up to Blackburn Ford. And now it's turn two. And Hunter's division is seen marching southward. Now ordinarily blocks on minor roads are stretched out. But in the Bull Run scenario, the blocks are not divisions, they're only brigades. So they don't get stretched out. Now these column markers aren't part of the regular pub battle system. I think they're kind of cool to have though. I find them useful. And there'll be a link in the description where you can order these if you want them. And now Johnson's Army of the Shenandoah has been drawn. The Union has crossed the Bull Run. It's time to move out. They formed up in the column and have moved out. And they encounter Stuart's cavalry. They send them ahead to blaze the trail. Which Stuart is all too ready to do. Beauregard scouts see that the North has crossed the Bull Run. He races to the other side of his line and moves the detachment troops forward to guard the artillery and to move them off the road so Johnson's column can head on through. Now it might seem that sending these troops over here on the east side of the line across the Bull Run to follow up the block that got pushed back, but that would require that the commander be within range. And Tyler is way over here on the western side of the line. His division is quite stretched out. So everyone holds. It's turn three. And Johnston's Army of the Shenandoah advances and begins deploying west of Mrs. Henry's farm. Let's zoom in a little closer and follow the action. The Union column advances forward. Beauregard arrives at the eastern side of his line. He finds Jackson's troops, part of the Shenandoah army, waiting for orders. He tells them the action is all happening in the west and they best get going. Still not sure of the intentions of the rest of the Union Army, he continued to hold his position. Turn four, it's now midday. 
Beauregard is moving his base east. But they no sooner get started than they run smack dab into Johnston's army of the Shenandoah. They will wait. Until they get there, Beauregard pulls Longstreet's men back and orders Early's brigade forward, though they hold back out of sight of the Union artillery. Johnston continues deploying the army of the Shenandoah. Meanwhile, Smith's brigade arrives at Manassas Junction. The last of the army of the Shenandoah has arrived. On the Union side, Hunter's 2nd Division secures its right flank and prepares to attack. Hunter and Heintelman confer and put together an attack plan. And McDowell has Runyon's late arriving New Jerseyans occupy the fortifications on the way to Washington. Critical in the minds of all three army commanders is the Harrisburg Turnpike, a major road that leads right to Washington. Turn 5, past midday. Elmer Sidney Johnson extends his line. And Heintzelman's 3rd Division deploys. And Hunter's 2nd Division moves its artillery into position and sets up its own line, ready to attack. And now it's turn 6. The day is dragging on. McDowell realizes now is the time. Now he has to start moving. The rest of the army of the Shenandoah has arrived and Johnson feels confident he can hold. Heintzelman launches an attack. Now if you're wondering how this works with pub battles, the attacker conforms to the defender. So even though Wilcox would have attacked like this when he contacted, you simply go like this, conform to the, to the defender, and you don't pay any movement costs or any turn costs for that final facing change. Second Division's artillery opens up. And suddenly Johnson's strong line is thrown into confusion. And McDowell has sent word to Tyler's 1st Division to charge forward. The Miles 5th Division is still held in reserve. Beauregard, having no action to his front but hearing the world exploding on his left, cautiously shifts some of his men westward. Sandwiched between two Union blocks, Evans Brigade had no escape. And they stand and they fight. And although they put up some resistance, they could not hold. Next we have Tyler's assault across the Bull Run. The Confederate troops, running from the attack on Lewis Ford, run smack dab into all the other retreating Confederate forces. And now there's a confused mob where there used to be an army. Turn 7, early evening. Hunter orders his men forward, while the cavalry guards the flank. The interesting Part of the Battle of Bull Run scenario is that everyone is militia, except for Jackson's Stonewall Brigade, which means they are uncertain in combat. Do they run? As soon as the enemy shows up, they push on through. You just can't tell. All this combat could have went the other way. Beauregard races to form up a line. Heintzelman races 3rd Division forward. Tyler will not be denied his glory. He orders 1st Division west. Johnston. His army in disarray falls back. But Jeb Stewart, passing through Newmarket, has a different plan. He drives on the Union cavalry. McDowell orders Miles' 5th Division south towards the Bull Run. Tyler's surprise assault on the Confederate artillery. And although they're thrown into disorder, the artillery and their escort are destroyed. And the cavalry battle in the far west. Stewart sweeps the Northern cavalry aside. Now this is where the chit draw becomes super critical, and Beauregard is drawn first. He builds a line. Heintzelman's 3rd Division continues its relentless drive, while Johnson is able to unpack bags and rally his army. And Stuart rides for glory. He's after the Union bags. But fearing exactly that, Hunter has pulled them to safety as he drives on the southern line. Not to be left out of the glory, Miles charges forward. Last combat of the day, we have Hunter's Drive on Johnson's line. And in the failing light, both sides fight to exhaustion, but Johnson's men inflict double the casualties. And Miles' assault on Beauregard, although it was too rushed and exuberant at the end of the day, crossing the Bull Run and assaulting an enemy in cover, the assault fails. So at the end of the day, as we look at the casualties, the North has lost five blocks, the South three plus a detachment. So in the end, based on casualties alone, the South has edged out a minor victory. 
but neither side has achieved the decisive result they both expected. This could be a long war after all. And this was a good game.